Hey guys, Vixan here. RTX London is currently underway as of this recording here, and I think they released this here. We got the third character reveal trailer for Genlock, which is, I've been told, coming out in January. Why? Why January? Why do we that long? Why? I mean, Ruby Volume 6? Literally right around, right around the corner. Why can't we get that? Why can't we get Ruby Volume 6 and a new Genlock together? Like, a Christmas gift for us all. I want now. <sighs> okay. Oh, oh, silly rant out of the way. It's probably because, you know, they got a bunch of A-list actors and everything. So, you know, at this point, they got to work when these guys can work. I mean... What movies? We could, I mean, hell, Michael B. Jordan was just supposedly gonna be playing a Superman. Like, I don't know, like a maybe some Earth 2 Superman or something like that, where my friend might explain how that worked. Like, he's basically, it's basically like, uh, say, taking Earth 2 plot lines here, where instead of just uh, Kal El and Kara, there were like f two other. Uh, escape pod left Krypton before it blew up, and yeah, a black, a black, a Kryptonian was one of them, and that's gonna be Michael B. Jordan. I. All right, so yeah, okay, so there was we had a other Kryptonian on Earth and stayed hidden all this long because you know afraid of his power, like my friend said. Okay, all right, and Mike, so there's that. My, Monica Rial, you know, we know she's a prominent voice actress, so she's got a lot of. A lot of work on her schedule, and you know, David Tennant is David Tennant. Who knows what she, who's, what is, what is he doing now that uh, the voice acting for season one of DuckTales is over? I mean, had they announced, yeah, they, they technically announced it's gonna be a season two, so what, is he recording his lines right now and just can, I don't know, but anyway, let's take a look at this guy here. So, this, this guy so far, thumbnail shows he's a bit of a techie. Doctor, it calls me to say this, but I'm impressed. Your recruit, Madrani, exceeds my expectations. Okay, cool. Yes, she and Chase work together rather well. They've been good for one another. Though the mech has changed. Their recent histories. Your new armor sets, however. What's the problem? Armor sets, huh? Uh, utilitarian. The engineers that uh. provided were from the very same team that designed our striders. Yes, I can tell. I'm going to protect oh. my investment. Move oh, on. yeah. Utilitarian. Potential. I have our next two candidates identified. Two? Uh, we have here an industrious young tech whiz and a highly spirited former tank driver. A hacker and a cook? Yeah, semantics. A hacker and a cook? Cyber ops say Miss McLeod is one of the Ms. most creative hunters they've ever met. Hmm? That sort of mental flexibility. Oh, blindfolded! As for Ida-san, his unit is very supportive to transfer him. That's because he was busted down to KP for insubordination. They're probably happy to be rid of him. Now, now, oh. Raiders, choosers, may I request their transfer? <laughs> no, we can do better than this. Each of these recruits is one in a million. If you could improve Genlock compatibility, we wouldn't have to rely on such sorry candidates. Keep looking. One woke up on the wrong side of the wall this morning. On the wall? On the wrong side of the wall? Interesting. A hacker? I can think what he said. I mean, they're not bad looking. They're, they're like... I compare those Genlock, the Genlock mechs here, sort of what I've seen in First Angel here with Django. Not bad. I mean, it's like combining almost Japanese... Japanese style with some Western aesthetics, and I can see why he wants a ha a hacker. <laughs> I mean, hey, uh, she could find bugs the system and even improve the system, maybe help him improve compatibility and a tank driver. That's also a cook. I wonder what. Okay, he he got demoted for insubordination. What exactly was he being insubordinate about? I'm that's always key in everything here. But he's also a cook, and I guess the doctor uh, needs to have someone who can cook for him because I don't know. If he had that robot we saw in like the previous trailer here cook for him, and it's just not that good. He'd rather have it like a human touch. <laughs> Either way, um, yeah, come on, we, we need more test subjects. And that girl, I mean, it could, 
I, I can see it now. Like he wants that he wants that uh, McCloud girl to help to help him like improve not just the software but also the hardware. Because like he said, it's very um the current models are very utilitarian. I can see, and then I see the Strider. It's like that thing looks like it straight came straight out of freaking BattleTech. And for those of you who've been keeping up with me, you know how I feel about the BattleTech mechs. I'm purely Eastern Japanese aesthetic all the way. I'm still so I'm still super super shocked to know that uh, the Atlas is supposedly one of the most powerful BattleTechs ever in the BattleTech universe. Is only thirteen meters tall. Huh. Anyhow, that's beside the point. Uh, so let's look at a little bit of a size comparison here between the current mechs and and what they and what the doctor's working with here is like. Wow, big ass size difference. They look. I almost compared these guys to being as big as the mechs from Full Metal Panic, but they seem taller. I have to wait and watch out. I just know that that tank we saw there, it was a pretty damn big tank. So everyone, uh, thank you all for watching. I am I like where this is going. And I like, at this point, uh, just do what the doctor says, because he, he clearly has an eye for talent. Where the military just, they just want what's on the, on the, want to, what's on the frickin' uh, rap sheet, resume. It's like, you gotta look beyond that, man. It's like what uh, Dr. Abraham Erskine saw in Steve Rogers. <laughs> oh, well, and how everyone, so again, comment down below what you all thought. Like, subscribe for more videos. Until the next one, this is Maxon, logging out.